Welcome back. Today is Sunday and we are on 16th of October. Time check, 9.30pm Singapore Asia time. I'm really happy to be back on this Sunday and you know, we got quite a number of stuff that we need to cover with you today before we start off the earnings week. This week itself is the peak earnings season, the start of many, many great companies announcing earnings. And we just kind of uh, really chill on a Sunday evening, going through the stocks and deploying what we need to play for this week. Now, before we get started, you know, uh, it is so important that we got to watch a very important video of the day that kind of uh, captured what is going on at the great Chinese party meeting in Beijing today. I want to play you this video. It's about one minute and uh, 50 seconds. And some of the words uh, used, uh, his presidency is speaking in Chinese. And of course, there's a live English translation. Uh, some of the the translation kind of uh, got lost in the meaning, but overall, I think we know where it's headed. Let's take a look at this video together, and then we're going to kind of uh, digest and plan for the upcoming crisis. All right, here we go. This uh, is playing out from The Guardian, and let's do it. <laughs> Yen 是中国人自己的事这针对的是外部势力干涉和极少数台独分裂分子及其分裂活动Wow, you heard it and it is very clear without any doubt that China will reunify Taiwan back into the home motherland. And that includes the use of force as clearly stated by President Xi. And that's the reason why for a few years since I started traveling to Taipei and you know, reaching out to the Chinese audience over there, I kind of, in a way, said it very clear to them that um, it is important that they have uh, banking accounts outside Taiwan. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but I think the day will come uh, it depends on quite a number of factors. The existing political party that's in power in Taiwan. Uh, the current one is pushing for independence. And there is the dangerous line of a fire to be played, played with uh, because you are faced with a much, much, much more powerful um, uh, greater China. Now, I'm not a political commentator. I I have no deep interest or deep expertise between China and Taiwan relationship. I can't speak for the Taiwanese. I can't speak for the Chinese. I'm a Singaporean. But what I do is to interpret the hidden nuances as spoken by President Xi 
And today's message is very clear. They will include the use of force. In the event, Taiwan goes uh, straight away to declare themselves independent from China, that will be the trigger. Or external forces uh, coming in to kind of uh, trigger the cross straits relationships. So this is a very, very clear message, and I suspect that's the reason why President Xi wants to control the power for the next five years, or in fact, not just the next five years. Uh, word on the street is already controlling the next 10 years, so he has a control, a full control of 20 years in power in China. On the other hand, for someone so powerful to be in control for 20 years, look at what has happened in the Cultural Revolution. Complete wipeout. Everybody back to square one. That includes uh, my forefathers, my Chiang lineage, tracing all the way to my great, great, great grandparents. And we lost everything. We, uh, our, my, my, my forefathers came from China. And, you know, at one time of our family lineage, we are very well to do according <laughs> to what has been passed down. Um, very well to do with a family of scholars. And during the Cultural Revolution, we lost everything, every single thing, literally back to zero. And that's how, you know, my grandfather had the vision, the only way to change the future of the Chiang lineage is to send the family out of China. And that's where he sent his wife, my grandmother, together with my father to Singapore while he stayed on back in China and he passed away when my father was nine years old. That's what I know so far. And of course, in, in my generation, I considered myself a Singaporean, not a Chinese, China Chinese, but a Singaporean Chinese. So many foreigners do not understand. They think that every Chinese out there is from... is. Um, uh, having roots in China. No, uh, my roots are in Singapore. Uh, it's just that our lineage, most Chinese, yes, we all started off from China. And then and then that's where it depends on which part of China you start from. Uh, then there was a split. Some move on to Hong Kong. Some move on to Taiwan. Some move on to Canada. And Chinese are everywhere across the planet. That's, it's so huge. Uh, but my generation and my children's generation, uh, we serve the army here in Singapore. Okay, that's, I think, is a very important news for today. And without further ado, uh, I want to greet those who have joined us in the live stream. Uh, welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. And let me just fire away the first chat. Well, I'm back. <laughs> so let's see who's uh, watching with us today. Uh, we have Marcus. Thank you for joining. Calvin, good to see you. Wilson, J-Lo, CK, Jacqueline, uh, Anton, uh, Chuman, Rose, John, Shane, uh, Hua Qian, uh, Karen, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, Karen, <laughs> uh, Yen, Jeffrey, and uh, John, Isabella, Ronnie, Kinip, uh, Emmeline, Andy. Wow. All of you having late nights uh, tonight on a Sunday. And typically Sunday, you know, is the time where uh, I just need to go to bed <laughs> because there's so many things to do. <laughs> right. I'm not too sure how's your Sunday. Uh, my Sunday has been good, you know. Uh, went to church this morning and was a very good sermon on marriage. And marriage is men. Uh, my pastor was preaching about it. Marriage is meant to be forever, not to be torn down, but, you know, is meant to be forever. Uh, of course, there are many, many Bible verses being quoted, and I should not go into that. But I think it's a beautiful message to remind all couples that uh, no matter how tough the going, you know, press on. Marriage is here for us to preserve. Okay. Another thing I want to bring up before I go to the most important article or, or the most important article of the day, 
and kind of uh, related to what we're going to go through for this week itself, all right? And here we go. This, I believe, is quite an interesting read and kind of a frame up my trades for Saturday and Sunday. So don't stop believing trade notification. I'll fire off the trade tonight after the YouTube, YouTube uh, live stream. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether it was yesterday or today, we combine it together. Then you are getting ready for Monday, all right? In any way, the market is closed. So here we go. We're going to take a look at this article. Analysts are standing by these stocks with robust upside ahead of Q3 earnings. And straight off, you see the picture right there? Pfizer. I got a big topic to cover on Pfizer tonight, uh, which is related to the most important article for today. All right. Now, before we get there, let me just go through the companies being mentioned. So, first off, we have a TransUnion right over here. It's firing on all cylinders ahead of its earnings report later this month. And they have a very compelling asymmetric risk reward over the next several years, not just next month, all right? <laughs> and the thematic drivers behind TransUnion are consol consolidating around three core teams. U.S. credit and risk, global non-credit consumer identity solutions, and international. All right, so they have a robust management, excellent track record, and so on. So typically what we do... TransUnion, we go right over here. Ticker symbol TRU. We have a quick check, all right? So uh, let me just move myself out. And straight away, we squeeze 2020 on the bottom left and current on the bottom right, all right? So when, when you look at a chart like this, and, and now you understand why I always need to see bottom left 2020, all right? Because it will allow us to do this piece of work, which is very important. Watch what I'm doing here. I lift up the chart. See, I just merely lift it up vertically so that I got more space to look at it. And then I can put my picture back up here. And then I start applying my horizontal line, all right? The lowest point back then in the pandemic of March 2020, yes, right now hit again the bottom of March 2020, today, right now. So we are always looking out for this kind of opportunities. Really, really uh, fascinating to look at it because we have to keep asking this question without any doubt. What has fundamentally changed since we have uh, shot ourselves with three booster jab of the vaccination, we have declared victory, kind of a mini victory over COVID-19, or right from the beginning, coronavirus. Um, and then uh, we got so many different names, right? Omicron, Delta, and right now it's COVID-19, and right now I don't know what other variants are popping up, all right? We are back to square one. And this notion I've been preaching for about one month already. How the heck all these stocks back to square one from Tesla to TransUnion? Does it mean every single one of them, they are going to collapse? <laughs> collapse to be worse than March 2020. I don't know what is worse than March 2020. Okay? So today I spoke to a large audience and I formally presented the four crises that we face in our current generation. It's not three, it's four. And kind of a gimme clarity of mine, and I think I, I'm on the right track for that. So we look at TRU, just bear in mind, uh, analysts are hopeful that it will bounce off, but the charts are showing that we might have a break below $55 per share. So this is how we look at it, all right? So the second one we're going to look at is Bungie. Here we go. And we're going to read right across here. Shares are down just 8% this year. This is really fantastic. But the firm believes Bungie could rally after the third quarter report. It also offers downside protection at 
current levels. Right? We have a constructive tone from the management and we shouldn't miss an opportunity to buy a stock that's misaligned from its long-term earnings potential, power potential. So what does this company do? It is a canola oil processing company's earnings report later this month. And we're going to jump straight away again, do the same exercise. Ticker symbol BG. And you can see this guy is at least looking above, right? The only part is this part here, it kind of uh, fell below the 200 day simple moving average. But all in is at least way above 2020 March. Back then it was trading at $30. Right now it's three times of $30 at $90. All right, so it's done fairly well. So between earlier on TransUnion versus Manji, guess what? You decide what is a better, uh, better offering or better uh, value proposition or stronger play. You start asking questions like this, all right? I, so I hope you get the drift. Third company, AES. Robust upside for the energy and utility company and we have a team, thematic play on energy stocks, all right? So uh, kind of in line with what we are thinking about. And the Inflation Reduction Act will allow AES to increase its renewable energy output more quickly than expected, right? So this is about clean energy, not oil companies, all right? So we're going to take a look at AES Corporation, the same approach. Go right back here. And ticker symbol is AES. Now, we got three extreme examples right now. The first one is going to break below March 2020. The second one is trading below 200 days simple moving average. And the third candidate right here is trading above 200 days simple moving average. So you see, we go A, B, C, and you think about either A, B, or C, and you keep narrowing the focus, all right? So this is really fantastic. So we are done on that. And of course, the rest are some other mentions of uh, Pfizer, Avid Exchange, AES, TransUnion, Bungie, and so on, right? Let me read off the one on Pfizer. And we're going to take a really uh, devil's advocate look at this company, all right? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, increased sales from Biohaven in 2023. Potential earnings potential beyond the loss of exclusivity of key drugs through the end of the decade. This is still underappreciated. All right, so that's about it. So I've gone through this simple article, kind of give us the feel. Then right now I need to run through with you the agenda for the week. All right, kind of prepare all of us. Uh, make sure you're ready, ready. And here we go. How to trade a big week of results, including Netflix and Goldman Sachs, all right? So let's start with Monday, tomorrow. We're going to have a Bank of America. We spent a great deal of time talking about banking stocks. By now, you should know where we are headed on banking stocks, right? Tuesday, Johnson & Johnson's coming up. This is a very strong play, all right? And you should take note in your diary. And of course, we also have Goldman Sachs coming up on Tuesday. Netflix is also uh, announcing earnings after the bell and as well as United Airlines. So quite diverse for Tuesday itself. Then we arrive at Wednesday, Proto and Gamble. This one will be the bellwether stocks because they are selling the common man items, all right? Uh, we want to know is uh, inflation hitting the consumer spending. That will be a big, big focus on uh, Product and Gamble, PNG, all right? Then you have IBM, and Tesla is coming out big as well. Now, Tesla, just like, holy moly, TransUnion, all right? Take a look at Tesla, TSLA, right across here. That moment of truth is at $200 line. Today, it's trading at 204 it will just take one or two simple crazy news, tang, 
you just touch 200. And then it's a decision whether you break below 200 or hell break loose or you bounce up. All right. So that is a scary, man. All right. That's coming on Wednesday. Thursday, we have American Airlines and we have Snap. And that's about it. All right. So that's kind of a key stocks that we need to look at for this week itself. Now, once we go through this and kind of warm up on a Sunday evening, I want to share with you the all-important article of the day. And this is a really, really scary article because it is talking about the U.S. biotech cartel behind COVID origins and cover-up. <coughs> this is a very, very strong word. And I want you to know the backdrop first. It's a YouTube channel called The Great Skill and it's featuring Jeffrey Sachs. Now, who exactly is Jeffrey Sachs? He's the director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University and chair of the Lancet COVID-19 Commission. Now, Lancet is one of the most powerful scientific journals out there and he's the chair of the COVID-19 Commission. So he says with a lot of um, uh, clarity that questions that others don't dare to ask. So I want to show you uh, the YouTube channel so that you guys can make an informed decision about it. And here we go. I'm not going to play the entire video out for you. It's a very long video. You just search for Jeffrey Sachs, U.S. Biotech, Grey Zone, and you definitely arrive at this uh, YouTube video called the Grey Zone 237,000 subscribers. And look at the strong, strong video title. U.S. Biotech Cartel Behind COVID Origins and Cover. Now, in a nutshell, what they are saying is this, all right? Let me just off the volume and let me just play it out. They are saying that COVID-19 started from a US lab. And there are concerted efforts to cover it up and play out like a natural phenomena. And of course, there were so many rumors that it started from Wuhan, started from bats and all kind of nonsense. But truly, it started from a bio lab ran by the Americans. All right. So um, here we go. There you have Jeffrey Sachs. Yeah. Basically, the virus SARS-CoV-2 that causes COVID-19 disease is a uh, Sarvico virus, a, a bat virus that is also called a SARS-like virus because it's uh, the same uh, subgenus as the virus that caused the SARS outbreak in 2003, 2004. But there's a, a piece of the genome of this virus that makes it really infectious. And that is called the cleavage site that sits on the spike protein that we all learned about and that allows the spike protein to be cleaved or divided and thereby enter human cells much more easily. SARS does not have this kind of cleavage site. SARS-CoV-2 is the only virus of this bat family, cervicovirus family or SARS-like virus family that has a proteolytic cleavage site. And the specific cleavage site is called the furin cleavage site. And it's four amino acids that make this thing so infectious that it became a, a global disaster with 18 million deaths. The operative question is, where did that come from, given that it is the only uh, furin cleavage site in this family or subgenus of viruses? Well, they didn't tell us at NIH, but we found out through leaks and lawsuits and all the rest, and by uh, because insiders knew about this, that one of the uh, projects of NIH funding 
was to insert furin cleavage sites into SARS-like viruses. They thought that was a good idea to make, construct viruses that would be more dangerous. Okay, we pause right here. It's a lot for you to digest. It's a lot for me to digest. And it's no longer a conspiracy theory because this guy is the chair of Lancet on the COVID-19 commission. This guy is the man with authority. And, you know, it's um, very sad to watch this video because uh, the government agenda is on a different track. And right now, you know, we always take a one or two step back to check back. Why they always put the blame on China, right? And all kind of crazy stories about Chinese eating bats and then from there they spread the virus and crazy stuff. But actually all this originated from US laboratory. I want to encourage you to go out and watch it, go and share this uh, video before it gets taken down. Uh, of course, this man, Jeffrey Sachs, is faced with so many challenges right now after he spoke about it. And I'm sure uh, they're not going to keep quiet on him. So this is really early news. Go and watch it. And, you know, kind of uh, the work that we do as investors in the market is really as we reverse engineer more, as we dive even deeper, we get in-depth knowledge. And our job is to connect the dots. And sometimes, you know, all these different feelings and emotions creep in and say, wow, do we need to take sides? Do we take the side of China, Taiwan, Ukraine, Russia, right? Do we need to take sides? We need Saudi Arabia and the US on oil. No. We have to stay neutral. We don't take sides. We take the side of how we connect the dots. Not because we feel about it, not because we have a sense of emotions about it, but because we connected the dots. So uh, this is really fascinating stuff, the holy grail of wisdom. And that's the reason why I can do this for the past 22 years and I can do this for the next 22 years. No problem at all. I want to hit my 50th mark. And I know over time, when you invested over 50 years like Warren Buffett, you'll be a legend. <laughs> so I'm not in this for the short haul and a short run. I'm in this for the long haul. I want to clock my 50 years clock. And, you know, just like pilot, I was trained as a pilot. It's always clocking how many flight hours do you have. It's the same. How many years do you have connecting the dots? And what have you done with the knowledge? And earlier on this afternoon, I was speaking about there's this group of traders or investors who always claim that they are like veterans, 10, 20 years in the market. And when I suggest to them that, are you aware that there's stock prices spiking up 5 to 100% in one day? And what are you doing about it? You say, you, what, what? You mean there are stock prices spiking up 5 to 100% in one day? I say, don't you even know about this? So it is not about you clocking the number of years in the market. It's about you clocking the number of years, connecting the dots and having a breakthrough in the thinking. That counts. So I want to be very clear. It doesn't mean someone who says he has 20, 30, 40, 50 years and that's it, that guy is wise. No, he could be doing the same thing, but didn't make an effort to have a breakthrough in the thinking. That's backward. That's not forward. We need to have a breakthrough every time we challenge. And we, we put ourselves on the line, we challenge. Is COVID-19 as what they claim to be? No, I don't think so. Right now with this video out by Jeffrey Sachs, I'm having a different thought. And perhaps it will add on to one more crisis that I'm thinking about. And that's the virus. It's a biological warfare. It's not simple as it is. 
so that pharmaceutical, some pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer can continue make and make and make more money. It doesn't stop. Everyone in the world depend, depends on the vaccination from Moderna, from Pfizer, from Johnson & Johnson, and no one else could sell it. Only guy that stood a stand, make a stand against it, is China. And I begin to have clarity. Oh, maybe China knew, knew something about the virus that they refused to let their people take the vaccination from Pfizer and Moderna. And that's why they are going all on a COVID, zero COVID-19 policy. Hey, it makes sense. Perhaps it makes sense. Perhaps they had a conversation with Jeffrey Sachs. You never know, right? So these are the things that I enjoy plowing through. I don't mind the hard work. Just keep digging, digging. And along the way, by the way, I fire off my trades. And if you subscribe to this ideology, then I invite you to join me. Join me and don't stop uh, don't stop believing trade notification. And you know, I can show you right here. This is going to hit the climax right now because we got so many people subscribing to this. And let's check this out. Right, there you go. This is the QR code. You can go to spi.ke forward slash help or you can scan on the QR code and join us on spiking profits 500% in one day on live stream. All right, so I'm excited to share this with you because uh, since March 2020, I have many versions of how the virus started. And one of the version was actually, it was planted by the Americans. Uh, because I cannot believe that they can fast track a typical 10-year clinical trial process, they squeeze that into 10 months. That has never happened in the history of men. A typical vaccination takes 10 years of clinical trial. Phase 1, phase 2, phase 3. <coughs> and finally approved. But when we have an outbreak of COVID-19, they squeeze that clinical trial to 10 months. Think about it, right? Pretty fascinating stuff. And by the time we hit November 2000, um, so it was uh, 2020 and plus four, 2020, yeah. 2020 uh, November was the election, remember? Uh, so exactly one week after the election, which Donald Trump lost, exactly one week after that, Pfizer announced that they had passed the efficacy from FDA. How coincidental. Exactly one week after that. That means to say, during the election, they already knew it passed. They just kept quiet, hold back, hold back, hold back. Once Donald Trump confirmed lost, boom, they dropped the bomb. So a variance of seven days is uh, <laughs> it's a game. So go and uh, watch that video and I, I hope you enjoy this process. It's really fascinating. Nothing beats the game of connecting the dots in the investing market. I want to thank all you all for joining me here tonight. You know, it's... Uh, it's such a pleasure to always be able to have this opportunity to share my insights with you and you guys tuning in to watch real time. Thank you very much. Have a great night and may God bless us very, very well for this upcoming week of earnings season. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.